Only once this season has the crowd for a league match here at Old Trafford dropped below the magic 50,000 figure. And Manchester United, in their 13 home league games, have let in only four goals. That's quite a tribute to the form and consistency of young Gary Bailey, still in his first full season of league football, despite having played in an FA Cup final and also being the goalkeeper for England under-21s. The Manchester United team is unchanged. Mickey Thomas is still troubled by a thigh injury, so at number 11, Ashley Grimes plays in his normal place on the left side of midfield. And for Bristol City, this is the team which produced their best performance of the season on Tuesday night when they beat Everton and won two much-needed points. Joe Royal is at number nine, despite being transfer-listed, and the Bristol substitute is Kevin Mabbott, who in the corresponding match last season scored a hat-trick here at Old Trafford in Bristol's 3-1 win. The referee today is George Tyson from Sunderland. Bristol City's win in midweek was their first in 12 games, so can they sustain that form now? Having drawn at Nottingham Forest, by the way, in their last away match. Bristol in white shirts and black shorts, that was Jerry Gow. And that was turned back by Pritchard, Sweeney trying to save it. And Cashley did. Manchester United in their normal red shirts, defending the Stretford end in the first half. Jeff Merrick for Bristol. Joe Royal the target, good header. Fitzpatrick is wearing number eight, this is Ritchie though. Trevor Tainton. Copper was in the way. Ritchie. That's Tom Ritchie of Bristol City. The Manchester United substitute today is Andy Ritchie. Jerry Sweeney. Pritchard. Tom Ritchie. Plenty of Bristol players forward, that's Tainton on the overlap. And Joe Royal was unmarked at the far post. Oh, and a mistake by McQueen, puts Bailey in trouble and Fitzpatrick shoots, and wide. Gordon McQueen, cold at the start of the match maybe, seemed to lose concentration. And in making that mistake, he committed Gary Bailey to coming out and diving at the feet. And when it went free, Tony Fitzpatrick, who's yet to score for Bristol City since coming from St Mirren at the beginning of the season, wasn't far away. Oh, Bristol appear to have made the more positive start here. Against the side lying second in the first division. David Rogers got their winner in midweek against Everton. Here's Houston. <laughs> Painter. Joe Jordan, wide to Coppel. His nickel, there's still four players waiting in the middle. Makari makes the run. Jeff Merrick sliding in. Kari and a corner. Well, Bristol City must be careful about Gordon McQueen coming up for corners. He's scored seven goals this season for Manchester United. And as Ashley Grimes attempts to bend this ball in, McQueen has gone right onto the goal line. Flicked on as well, and in came Joe Jordan at the back. And Jordan makes it one nil. Congratulates him. And Manchester United in front from a set piece. Ashley Grimes hit the corner in fierce to the near post, flicked on, and Jordan coming in at the back scored his own seventh goal of the season. And while the Bristol defenders, or one or two of them anyway, were looking for McQueen. It was Jordan who took advantage. And McElroy has now started a run from his own half, and so has Koppel. And so has Jordan. It was his header. And it was Tainton who turned it back, having tracked McElroy all the way. That was Buchan. This is Jordan. 
and it's Buchan again. Beaten by Gao for the moment. Here's McQueen. <laughs> Coming on one of his runs, this is Wilkins. Nice back heel to Grimes. Manchester United have seven players in attack here. Four awaiting in the penalty area. Wilkins. McElroy's flick. Makari. Makari on again. Offside, I think. Wilkins shot, and I think he was offside anyway. But it was a fine move. Wilkins figured early on. Lou Makari then set Wilkins up again. But as Wilkins shot, I'm sure he was offside anyway, and Jordan putting the ball in the net didn't matter. Just flicked off McQueen's head. Whitehead, McElroy trying to intercept, this is Gow, Pritchard, down the line is Tainton, that was Buchan, McElroy saw that well and seized it well, Hopple, but his momentum took him on there really, McCarr is in the centre, goal McElroy will ever score and Lou Macari should get even more of the credit than him. Popple made it possible in the first place, he went past one man and his momentum carried him past the second. The cross went in, Macari's header beat the goalkeeper, hit the post and McElroy just prodded the ball over the line. Just seven minutes to half time Manchester United go two goals in front. And Bristol City, who began the match in quite confident mood, with Tom Ritchie on the near post, found room nicely. Pritchard, oh, that's wasted. So is that in the end by Nicol. Manchester United's biggest victories uh, so far this season, by the way, here have been 5 0 over Norwich and 4 0 over Stoke. And they lead Bristol by two in the first half. Here's Whitehead. I think the Manchester United manager Dave Sexton will be very satisfied to see his side putting away what may appear to be simple chances but it goes to show that when the ball is in the air defenders have just got to stick to their marking jobs and they fail to do that here the Bristol players in defense and they've been punished twice McQueen again Jordan oh here's Grimes Tainton was with him and Grimes again looking for Houston this Pritchard Gow Sweeney. Oh. And it was McQueen that uh, left Sweeney on the floor. And Bristol City badly needing to get one of those goals back before half time to stay in the match. Here's Ritchie. Rogers. Royal. away by Jordan, here's Koppel, this could work for United, Koppel 
has got Makari and McElroy, the same two players in the middle as before, and fouled by Whitehead. The speed with which Manchester United break was very evident then because it was Joe Jordan, the centre forward, who actually cleared the ball from his own penalty area. But even without him up front, they still had three attackers in good positions. Coppel, who made the break, and Makari and McElroy, who were waiting in the centre. Jordan coming in. What a tangle. Oh! I suppose turned the ball over his own goal line referee having a word with Jerry Gow and also waving uh, Joe Royal away and poor Bristol City are now in a desperate position they're three goals behind we still haven't reached half time and nothing has gone right for them the own goal compounding a first half riddled with defensive errors. Here's Tainton. Pritchard. Royal. And now Koppel, whose two bursts have actually caused the last two goals. Makari. coming to meet Koppel and Manchester United who so often this season have won by one goal are now in the healthy position of having three to spare Makari Nickel Jordan's in there again and again he got a foot to it Royal Ritchie Pritchard again the Queen's header Tainton Gow Ritchie and McElroy got back this is Wilkins to Jordan Let's put the Stratford end in good voice this first half. We've actually reached the 45 minute mark. It's just time added on for stoppages. Here's Nickel though. Well, look at the space on the left. He played it rather a long way forward, but it's Grimes chasing. And a corner. has looked so unsettled, so disturbed that this corner is perhaps the last thing they want to face at the moment. McQueen on the line again. Goalkeeper coming to meet McQueen and the referee blows the whistle for half-time. And Manchester United, the sideline second in the first division, make Bristol City's relegation problems seem all too real. Joe Jordan starting things off with a six-minute header following a corner. McElroy, a simple goal after 38 minutes, and an own goal by Jeff Merrick two minutes before half-time. So Manchester United get the second half underway, attacking the Stretford end. And here's Pritchard for Bristol City. This is Fitzpatrick. Strangely, Bristol created the first opening of the match when uh, McQueen blundered and Fitzpatrick shot just wide, but since then, things have gone against them. Particularly against Jeff Merrick. That 
Alex Tainton. Houston. There has been some rather sloppy passing at times, which has done nothing to improve the rhythm of the match. This is Pritchard. Sweeney. Going for the return, and Buchan in the way. Richie. The other fullback, Whitehead, has joined the attack in the centre. Here's Merrick. Oh, it's actually running terribly true at times on this surface. It's uh, bobbled several times as the player was about to make contact. Jordan causing problems again. Here's McElroy. Wilkins has made a run through the centre. Grimes, Makari near post, Jordan! They're appealing for offside, but the goal has been given. And Joe Jordan gets his second. And you can't ignore little Lou Makari, even when the ball is in the air. It was a good build-up by Manchester United. McElroy involved on the left. The ball played into the near post. Makari with the flick on. And Jordan, once again, coming in from beyond applied the finishing touch. Three minutes into the second half, Manchester United 4, Bristol City 0. United now needing one goal to equal their season's best of five against Norwich. And Old Trafford, understandably, in good voice. charge this by the big centre half Grimes over on the far side there's room for Manchester to develop with McElroy still McElroy tangling with Merrick in the end by McQueen on Royal. Sun shining and casting long shadows on the pitch, even in late February. Not a very bright day for the team struggling against relegation. Merrick takes the kick for them. Here's Gow, though. Oh, he did, he got something back for Bristol there, did Jerry Gow. That was really well struck as Royal competed in the air and the ball bounce back and free Gow's volley was just too high other than that it's been a fairly quiet afternoon for Gary Bailey Makari oh. Grimes pulling away Jordan to Ashley Grimes, whose header first time was beautifully placed for Jordan. So was his. It beat the diving Cashley, but it hit the post. Houston. And here comes McQueen again. <laughs> oh, someone's boots come off. It's McQueen's, I think, because in the meantime, the man that dispossessed him, Fitzpatrick, is on the ball, and he's found Pritchard. Tainton. It's almost a gift that, and Joe Royal couldn't take advantage of it. Gow, well, not to be too unkind on uh, Royal, because what happened there was that Gordon McQueen was stranded upfield with his boot off, and when the cross came in for Bristol City, Jimmy Nichols had a finished at the feet of Joe Royal, but look how quick Nichol was to make up the ground and actually block the shot, and to let Manchester United recover, while Gordon McQueen discovers just whether he's hurt his ankle and if so how badly 
for Gordon McQueen, who was out of action earlier this season when, uh, you may remember, Kevin Moran came in and did very well at centre-half, but he's out of action again now, is McQueen, hobbling off after hurting his ankle in that midfield tackle or challenge. And he'll be replaced by Andy Ritchie, who earlier this season almost moved to Aston Villa, decided to stay, and has got 17 minutes to prove something this afternoon. I think Houston will move into the middle of the back four and Grimes will play left back. This wouldn't be an unusual move because Houston's played centre-half before. You can see him in the middle there and Grimes played left back. Earlier this season and there he is resuming that role now. Bristol City is still disputing one or two things and the referee wants a word with Clive Whitehead who he spoke to earlier about dissent. And indeed it looks as though Whitehead's being booked. So now we have Makari dropping I should think more into the midfield and Richie and Jordan the new strike force. Here's Nickel. Just to get the Richies absolutely clear for you, that's uh, Andy Ritchie of Manchester United, and the Bristol City number 10 is Tom Ritchie. In the meantime, Bristol City themselves want to make a substitution. Kevin Mabbott, who scored a hat-trick here last season and went home with the match ball, is coming on in place of Joe Royal. They're chanting... Uh, reject at Joe Royal because he used to play for Manchester City but in the meantime Mabbott is the Bristol number 12. Here's Jerry Gow. Mabbott who's taken Royal's place at centre forward finds Tainton. Whitehead's joined the attack for Bristol City. This is Sweeney though. That's Whitehead flicking it on and Tom Ritchie came in behind and was tackled by Ray Wilkins and looked for a penalty which he didn't get. Crossed by Fitzpatrick, clearance by Nickel. And a chance for Manchester United to break with Jordan. Andy Ritchie on the far side, Cockle in the middle. That's not a bad ball, there's Ritchie. Cockle couldn't quite get there even at full stretch. Andy Ritchie found a good position there and he applauds the man who supplied the cross, Joe Jordan, who picked him out quite superbly. It was a lovely ball from Jordan because it really tempted the defender, yet it was too far away for him to intercept and it gave Ritchie the chance to get his effort in and Koppel couldn't quite apply the finishing touch. Koppel, seen plenty of the ball today and used it well. Wilkins making a run now through the inside right position. held back by Rogers, free kick. Mistake by the big centre half and he could only atone for it by pulling Wilkins' shirt. Jordan's there, not quite, and Richie couldn't make it either. Well, Jordan must be wondering whether he's ever going to get the hat-trick. He's hit the post once, he won the ball in the air again there, and still it wouldn't go in. by Houston and time for a <laughs> more humorous side of the game Whitehead Pritchard there goes Mabbott and it was cleared by Nickel to Coppel Richie did well to get a touch from that. He took a fairly heavy hammering as he did so. The referee decided it was fair enough from Rogers. The play goes on. And here's Fitzpatrick for Bristol City with a chance to get something going. They've got four men forward. Tom Ritchie. Nice turn by him. And Makari on his back. 
and still suffering from that last challenge is Andy Ritchie. Stratford end with their team four goals up and the substitute apparently recovered. There's Tom Ritchie. That's aimed at Mabbott, and he's got there too. Pritchard shot, good save by Bailey. Mabbott, and deflected. Well, why have Manchester United kept so many clean sheets? Because of Gary Bailey's form, largely. Pritchard. And Whitehead joined the attack there to get the header in. But that was a very good instinctive save by the England under-21 goalkeeper. Ritchie turning his man well, Mabbott in there. And when the shot came, Bailey was just in the right place, having come off his line to narrow the angle and beat it out. The follow-up shot deflected by a defender. And the referee blows the time. And the roar which goes up says that Manchester United's championship bid is by no means over. On a day when... Liverpool were given a difficult match. Manchester United made theirs look fairly easy. Joe Jordan got two of the goals and was a permanent threat to Bristol City, who themselves will have suffered with that defeat. They've now gone six away matches without scoring, and they're anchored there in the bottom three. But Manchester United, who had their critics this season, just go on winning their games when they can, and this one they won pretty convincingly by four goals to nil.